Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Now, he's saying if in the future, if you don't keep God's laws, it's going to be a set of curses that fall upon who? The children of Israel, right? So I'm going to show you some words of the sign, verse 48. 46, 46, watch this, look, so watch this, now I'm going to show you the reason why I'm about to go over these set of curses, right, because they're not just, you know, they're punishments, but they're there and stuff on us for a reason, so we can see something in the later days, watch, read, verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever, so jump back to verse 15, but hold on, so now these curses is going to be on the children of Israel in a later date, which is now, and we're, that's going to be an identifying mark to see who the children of Israel are in these last days. For example, that sign right there, right? What store is that? Walgreens. How do you know it's Walgreens? Because it's a sign that says Walgreens, right? One more. What's the, what was that? Check cash, right? I know it's a check cash place because it's a sign. Who are the children of Israel in the last days? Let's see who, who, who these curses sound like they are affecting today, and that is going to be the identifying part, the sign on who to see the children of Israel are. That's right. But it shall come to pass. In the, verse, 16, sorry. verse 16, curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. So check it out. Curse thou shall be in the field. We're going to go from the past to the present. You shall be in the field. Look at that. Uh, hold up that sign. Ace. 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 Hold up the sign of slavery. All right. Look, well, look at this right here. We were working the fields. Who was picking the cotton fields? Who's, let me ask you, who's, cool? who's picking the cotton fields? The saints. We can all know. Yeah. All right. Who, all right. So now he said, oh, you, we already know on the cotton field, black folks was picking, you know, for again, so they can know who we're talking about. Was picking cotton, being beaten, all that stuff like that. Who was the sugar canes, the poppy seeds? Now you're going in the northern kingdom, the Hispanics and the Native Indians, right? So watch this. Uh, so read from the top. Look, look at that sign right there. That is a curse. That ain't nothing normal. That's not something that people should have to go through. That's a curse. We were cursing the field, being sold on the auction block. Imagine seeing your mama looking at you for help because you're the man in the house because they're already gonna kill your father. Now she's looking at you for help because she's about to be sold into slavery. You ain't got, you ain't got no power to stop that. You curse in the field, bro, because now they will make, they will sell you, they will sell your daughter, your brother, your sister, and make you work for their benefit. Read it from the top. Curse shall thou be in the city, bro. You can look around. Who lives in the slums and the ghettos of every city in the world? Bring it out. Us. These are identifying marks of who the Israelites are going to be in the last days. Brother, you hear that? These are identifiers. Just like that's Walgreens. Just like that's Ke Check Cash. Just like that's Cricket Wireless over there. These are signs. We know who the Israelites are because of these curses. Read on. And curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall be thy best and thy store. So look, why is it so hard for black owned businesses to thrive? Bring it out. <laughs> you see, but you see how you have your own um, opinion on different things like that. But be, believe it or not, hold on. Okay, let's make it practical. Let's make it practical.
Let's make a practice. I got you. Okay, name name something that you think we're struggling with right now. I got you. Check it out. Name something that you think that black folks would benefit from right now. Brother, listen clearly. Listen. You, 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 you're talking on a tangent. You're speaking on a tangent. Economic eyes. Right, so look. Alright, so name three things that our people would be better for if they had it. Name three things that we'll benefit. Alright, so let's stop with that. For less crime. Go to Leviticus 1917. So you're asking for application, right? You're asking for things that can be applied. Listen clearly. Don't just listen for a response. Or, or, or a comeback. Listen because you actually want to learn the questions you say, right? You know what I'm saying? A lot of people just ask questions and then they listen for a quick response. No, just listen so you can learn. Watch. Now you're saying black, our people will benefit from, uh, from the crime rate lowering down, right? Read. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou yeah. well, shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So stop. If we stop hating our brothers right here in our heart and our mind, but man, look, he, he dressed better than me. He he do this, he do that. Man, I'll, I'll do this to him, I'll do that. That's called hating, bro. How many people you know got shot for somebody hating on them? Teach, Bring, bring, it, out. On. bring it out. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Check it out. How many times you heard our people say, oh, that ain't none of my business. If I see a brother smoking crack, I am going to tell him not to. Why? Because that is my brother. Right. You, know, you, who, you got a brother? Who can argue with Hold on. Nobody can argue I'm, No, no. Listen clearly. Yeah. Yes, it could. Matter of fact, majority of people out here did. That's right. We were telling people stop selling drugs all day today. So there's one who sells it and there's one who uses it. If I tell yeah. one stop selling, <laughs> that means the person ain't going to use it. So we are telling them that and they are complaining. But you ask the question, where is the applicable uh, things that this law could benefit, uh, benefit me, right? So I am showing you, I'm showing you, I'm showing you ways that keeping God's laws is going to put you in a better situation. Right. Let's see another one. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 4. Let's see what that's talking about. But if, uh, you think less baby mamas and baby daddies would benefit us? You think, you think that? You think that, which is better? Baby mama or baby daddy or husband or wife? Which one's better? Bring it out. Of course, the latter. All right. Let's see where the scripture says that at. Because again, you ask for application, you ask for tangible things. Right. Let's see what it says. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Bring it out. Marriage is honorable in all. Meaning, have a wife. Women, have a husband. Stop having boyfriends. Stop having girlfriends. Why? Because that creates what? Diseases in the community. Everybody sleep with everybody. Right. Baby mamas, baby daddies. All type of foolishness. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. In the bed under fire. What you do with your wife and what you do with your husband, that's your business and it's undefiled and it's righteous in the eyesight of the Lord. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The Lord will judge people who live in the other way. You want to just sleep around with everybody? Guess what? Now you got AIDS. Now you got crabs. Now you got syphilis, gonorrhea, different herpes, different type of STDs. Bring it up. So guess what? The law is saying, stop doing that, right? Read. That's it. Hey, guess what? How else is he judging? Child support. Child support. Child support is terrible, right? Nobody likes child support. But you wouldn't have to deal with that if your child was living in the house. How would your child live in the house if you was married to the mama? You know what I'm saying? Now you ain't got to go over there and go over there. You just go home. Right. And take care of your family. That's right. So again, God's laws is beneficial. Right. It's beneficial. Bring it up. You understand? Know it's not, see, because what people misunderstand, they think we out here teaching religion. Right. We're not teaching religion. God never gave you religion. That's God right. gave you a set of laws. For example, you got kids? Like, who got, like, you, obviously, you, you was a child at one point in time, right? So, you know, you grew up in the house with your parents? All right, your parents had rules in the house, right? Clean your room, wash dishes, do good at school, right? Those are her laws, or his laws in the house. Do you need a religion to listen to your parents? You, you don't need a religion to listen to your parents, right? You just what? You just be obedient, right? That's the same thing. You don't need a religion to be faithful and, and honor what the Most High says. You just need obedience. If the Lord say do this, and don't do that. It's called obedience. You listen to his laws. This book is a book of laws. That's not a book right. of it's the history and the laws of God and the relationship between this God and his people. Right. Let me get Lamentations 401. Because the thing is this, bro. 
We always want to talk about how back in the day we was kings, we was ruling, we was this, we was that. But how do we call, how do we fall from kings to slaves? Bring it out. How do we fall to this low level? Bring it out. I'm going to show you this. Read. Uh, uh, Lamentations 4 and 1. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1. Bring it out. How is the goal become them? The Lord spoke to you and said you are comparable to gold. Not even comparable, he called you gold. But you ever had a gold chain and you see after years of dirt and wear and tear, it got a little dim, got a little dull, got a little dirty? Read. How is the most fine gold changed? Look at our people. Are we in our, in, our, in our prime right now? We are suffering. We are a shadow of the former glory of what we were. We like to say we was kings, we was this, we was ruling. We, the, the Moors ruled Europe for a thousand years. Uh, King David slayed all the heathens. No, we talk about... Th Those people go back hundreds of thousands Look, years. guess what? You can, you can even talk about other things, right? But listen to what I'm trying to tell you. We talk about how we was great, right? How did we fall from that greatness down there? How did the gold, how did the... the, the read on How is the most fine gold change? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. Look at that. You can look in the, the streets of linen with the jewels of God, not knowing they value, not knowing who they are. Look at that. That brother is a prince of the most high. That sister is a princess of God. That's but yet she's right. living like a slave here in America. Teach become them. How do we fall to this state? Because we sinned against the Almighty God who is now punishing his children. And the only way to get out of that punishment is to listen to your father. Just like how you, you came home, and if, you, if, if some choice wasn't done, when your mom or your father told you to do it, you get a whooping, right? You're gonna get a whooping. What's the only way to stop getting a whooping? To listen. That's right. So guess what? We want to get out of our condition? We have to return to the laws of God. That's and once right. we return to the laws of God, we will also return to our former glory. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.